So this time, once again, we're in Austin, but we are in my room. We are indoors. It's a little cloudy. I have a meeting to go to in a bit, um, so I'm not going to be able to go outside to go to a hike. And uh, I still have not gotten bug spray. It's been a very busy week. Like I mentioned before, I work at the Alamo, which is like a theater chain here in Texas. Uh, it's expanding. There's like a couple that are opening up in California and there's a few in other states. Um, but it's a, it's based here in Austin. It's like where um, the, the main six are uh, located in. It's like a, like a restaurant slash theater. Why am I bringing this up? You know, you get very tired, kind of like running all day. You're literally kind of just like crouching down, bringing in food trays and stuff. It's pretty cool though. Like, you know, you, you, f you do work and uh, you get like a percentage of tips and stuff. So, it's, you know, it's not bad. You really can't complain. Um, it's flexible with your time. I have enough time to do stuff like this and then watch movies and then I get movies for free. So if you're going to do like a typical day job um, for a movie lover, it's really one of the better things you can do, you know, for me, uh, in my mind. While I'm talking about like doing the, the day job thing, I'm kind of like, at least for the past, for a while now, and I've, I'm, I've talked about this kind of idea with, with different people at different points in time, but um, the idea of patronage kind of comes up. So I didn't always make my living from music. For about the five years after graduating from an upstanding liberal arts university, this was my day job. I was a self-employed living statue called the Eight Foot Bride, and I love telling people I did this for a job because everybody always wants to know who are these freaks in real life. Hello. I think like for most artists, you're, you're trying to monetize your creativity. You're trying to figure out whatever your craft is, and you're trying to um, ideally make a living off of it. And it's very difficult. And I don't know if you really can. Uh, but one thing that's for sure, and that's, that's kind of become cemented in my mind, is that you have to practice your creativity. You have to do it. If you like to write, you have to write. If you like to dance, you have to dance. If you don't, you kind of like shrivel up and die, you know, internally. Your inner life is corrupted and you become very nihilistic and very negative and cynical. Um, so if you have to calculate this equation in life, you for sure, as a creative individual, have to practice your creativity. So what are you gonna do though? You have to pay your bills. You have to, you know, you have to pay for your phone, you gotta pay for the gas, you know, your rent. Um, what are you gonna do? Um, well, you know, like if you live at home, you don't gotta worry about your rent, but you still, you know, whatever it is you're gonna do, you have to use materials. Paint isn't free. Um, you know, like uh, musical equipment, you could get, you know, some stuff cheaper than others, but everything costs money. Feeding yourself costs money. Like when I took time off of work so that I could work on the movie, I was, you know, the debt that I accrued wasn't on the film. It was on like sustaining myself. It was on buying food. It was on buying, uh, you know, just whatever I needed at that time. Toothpaste, deodorant, all these little things that you don't really think about. Um, you know, that, that build up really quickly if you're not careful. Um, so this idea of patronage kind of keeps coming up. It's like, you know, back in the old days, uh, people would, um, like a church or some sort of a political entity would give money to an artist so they could get the art that would facil facilitate their needs. Uh, and now it's very different, obviously. But um, we have a little bit of that coming in with... Uh, with crowdsourcing and not, not just Kickstarter because you know like um, I think I've talked about that obviously and and I've experienced that and I've been very blessed with that um, and I think I think what I'm trying to get at is like things like Patreon I think are things that get me excited um, I like the idea of like a youtuber that doesn't have to rely on advertisements or that they don't have to like create their content based around ads we have to consistently plug in some bullshit service that I don't give a shit about. They have to plug in 
some, you know, I don't know, like um, pills, clothes, Instagrammers that are like promoting beanies and, you know, like um, swimsuit wear and shit like that. You know, it's like stuff that's totally in left field. And uh, I don't know, like the patronage, like Patreon, you know, like you, you give someone a couple bucks, five bucks, ten, it really just depends on, on the person's needs and on, you know, whatever it is that they're, they're willing to give uh, in the same way that someone is willing to leave a tip when you go to a restaurant, when you go to an Alamo, um, going to an Alamo, going to the movie theaters or a video store or like that random little bookstore. Um, all of these places, like, you're keeping it alive by you visiting it. You know, I feel, I feel like it's just a different method of patronage by actually paying, being proud to pay for uh, whatever obscure thing that you're into. Because everyone's into, everyone's weird in their own way. And everyone's into these little obscure things. So it could be a band that no one else listens to, no one in your, your work environment listens to, no one... You know, none of your friends want to listen to that vinyl or pay however much for that vinyl player, you know, like just, I don't know, you got your thing and you can probably think of better examples, but you, you are a patron of your facilitator of what makes you weird, you know, like I got my Patreon, you know, so it's like I got the one, um, but you know, that got me a desk and it got me a chair that I'm sitting in right now, so... You know, it keeps me doing that. And right now while I'm moving, it helps me stay alive, you know. Um, there's other uh, Patreon channels that I really like. Like, I think the famous one is like, like Nerd Writer, you know. Um, but there's more video essays and people that analyze scripts and stuff that's specific to my interests that you won't like or that you might like. Who knows? But they can't really make a living off of ads. But they create content that has value to me. So I am willing to give them two bucks, three bucks a month, right? So it's like, <clears throat> even though someone like me struggles or whatever, I know the situation that I'm in. And I can only assume their situation. But I like the, what they're I like what they're doing. I want to show support in other ways than just the view. So I try to be a patron, you know, so, um, so these are thoughts that I'm thinking about, this is what's going on in the week, otherwise it's just, you know, it's another busy week, my feet fucking hurt, you know, I need some new shoes, I'm, I'm wearing these, uh, these Converse, right, that are just like beat up, and, uh, they're very flat, so when you're kind of running around all day at work, um, you feel <laughs> every step that you've taken, um, that's, you know, that's not a bad thing, I guess, but, you know, it's just another thing on the list of things that I need. But, uh, you know, overall, though, progress. You know, we uh, are catching up on our bills. We're settling into the new environment. We are uh, acclimating. So hopefully you guys have a good week, and hopefully you guys are acclimating. And uh, become a proud patron to whatever it is that you guys are into. Someone's, like, super into that, like... That, uh, that hipster coffee shop, go visit that coffee shop and leave a good tip. You know, that, that tip is good karma. Cheap karma. <laughs>